गुड इवनिंग आई होप दैट सब चंगा सी इन दिस वीडियो सी दिस प्रॉब्लम इट्स एक्चुअली द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ टू मेजर थिंग्स विच वी सो इन लेक्चर फोर एंड विच वी हैव बीन सीन इन द लास्ट ट्रावर्सल लेक्चर्स लेट्स सी दिस प्रॉब्लम पेटी केयरफुली एंड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट इट्स अ वेरी 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 कॉमन प्रॉब्लम Like very common problem. It's asked a lot. It's just the variation of this problem, but it's a very common one. Let's see the problem. We are given a m cross n two d binary grid, which represents one means land. I will mark it as green to show a better representation, and zero means water. Cool. Let's say mark it as blue. Return the number of islands. Islands is just a connected land. Cool. An island is surrounded by water and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically. You remember something in a grid? Uh, if a land is connected horizontally or vertically, then it is B an island. Okay, you may assume all the four edges of the grid are all surrounded by water. Cool, which means that this grid, it's all water, water, water. Like no island beyond this grid. So we have to just analyze this grid only. Let's see the example pretty carefully. I just showed the same grid right here. You will easily see what's happening here. In the green, I have marked my land, and we want the number of islands. And we also know, okay, an island, a land is connected to one land horizontally or vertically, which means four directionally connected. Okay, we have heard this word before, right? Four directionally connected, which means four directionally, the four directions. It is being connected. Now. If it is connected, then this particular let's say the well let's say we start with this island. It's connected with this. It's connected with this. It is connected with this. It's 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 connected with this. You see, all these lands are connected to each other because they are all horizontally or vertically connected with each other. That's the reason we just went on okay and say it's one island and we cannot see any other land here. So I can just return okay. The answer is one because we have found one island. Let's move on to the next example. It just I have showed the same thing right here. I just went in here. Let's say I because I am thinking of number of islands. For number of islands, I just need to think of land for that island, right? So I just grabbed one land. I just can go horizontally and vertically. I went there. I can go horizontally or vertically. I went there. I can't go horizontally, horizontally, vertically, vertically. No. Okay. It's done. It's one island. Okay, cool. One island. But still, I can see some of the lands in my whole grid left, right? Greens are still. I can see. So I can again see. Okay, I have some greens left. So let's go on to this green. Like up, down, right, and left. All our water. So it's also one island. Cool. Now I can still see. See. Okay, it is marked as purple. It is marked as purple. I can still see. Some of the green lands. It is right here. Okay, I just go into here, and I can again see. Okay, in the right there is once again land. In the top, it like no land. In the left, no land. So okay, it's again one island. Thus, I can say I have three islands possible, and the answer is three. You saw what's happening here. You just went on to one of the land, then you tried. to go to all the lands which you can reach from this land right here which means you just try to go to here 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 and all and then in the next iteration okay okay when let's say you started from this land you just try to exhaust all the lands possible which are connected to this land connected to this land you saw the word connected to this land okay cool Just remember this word. Then you just thought, okay. Still, I just look for any other land because I just need to find the number of islands. Okay, it's one island, good. But it can have multiple islands. It had one island. I was sure, okay. But it can have multiple islands. So I just went on to the next one. Okay, that's cool. Then again, I just thought, okay. I just tried to go, but it can't go anywhere. So it's just another another island. Then I went on to the next one and tried to go. It's just another island. It's another another island. All these three are the islands. So you saw what happened. 
if we started we started with one land do a complete traversal as and where we can reach and thus we found okay it's a one connected component you remembered what was a connected component a component a nodes or cells which are connected to each other all these are connected to each other what's the connection like horizontal or vertical that is the connection and then i can say okay number of connected components in this particular graph is three one two and three these three are the number of connected components that is the only thing you have to do which means i'll just start at this graph at any of this land i just try to do the traversal i can do any traversal bfs or a tfs traversal when we can do both the traversals in 99 percent of the times it's highly recommended that you do a depth for such traversal why because the as we saw the code is pretty short and it's exactly the same in complexity also in the space and time so it's good that you just fastly write this code of uh, depth for search and you would be good to go but as we just need to do a traversal it's not required that, okay you just have to go like this you want to see the shortest path or something so you can do any traversal if it, it, it had said i want the shortest path i want something like this then we would have done a bfs but if it's just saying okay just traverse every node you can which means if i am starting from this node I can just go in a EFS way, which means both and like this. Or I can just go in a depth for search way, like this, 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 and so on and so forth. So it's just that I will just go on to every of those land. I will just do a depth for search traversal until all the nodes in that component are exhausted. When it is exhausted, I can say, okay, I have found one island. Again, I'll go on to any of those non-visited land, which means the non-visited land, it should be land, right? Then I just say, okay, it's a non-visited land. I just again do a F for search traversal. Okay, and again say, okay, if it is done, it's one island. Then I again go to an unvisited land, again do a traversal, F for search traversal to find another component and we'll say, okay, now it is another island. And that is ultimately I just count all the number of islands. The code is pretty, pretty simple. Firstly, I just have initialized my all the variables M, N and number of islands which I need to find. Then I just went on to every of those cell in my grid so that I can find, okay, I can just go on every land and start the TFS travel cell provided it is not visited before, which means I'll just go on and start the EFS traversal on this land. You say, Aryan, uh, I could not see that you have put a visited thing here. You should have, or you should have opted for the visited array here, like vector here, and then also have checked the visited here. I'll say that if you just go back and see that I have, as soon as I visit a node, I am just marking that node as back to water which means as soon as this land is visited i'll just mark it back to water so in the future i cannot visit that land because it's no longer a land before but always make sure that in an interview when you show this approach just ask the interviewer that is it good that i modify my existing array or not which means is it good to modify my existing grid or not because it's not a good practice in the production code that you modify the input but it saves the space as you can see i am not using my visited so it's using the space i'm not using the space okay cool i just went on to the land which has not been visited because anything if it is land right now it is not visited then i just did a efs traversal and every of those traversal indicate okay one island of one connected component is being found so i'm just increasing the number of island here which means this ultimately i have to do the number of islands and it is a simple standard tfs traversal on a grid as we saw for the bfs also that uh we just went we start from the node we just go on to every of the possible nodes okay 
I just start from a node. It's, it's just initializing the variables M and N. No worries. I just then try to go to the next of the of those cell. So as I reach my I and J, firstly I check is that I and J a valid cell or not? Which means it should be in the bound of the of the grid and it should not be a water. If it is a water and if it is out of bounds of the grid, I have to return back. I can I cannot go to that cell. It's not allowed. It's not a it's not a valid cell. I cannot. So it's just a base case for every recursion problem. You have a base case, right? It is the base case that as soon as you go out of bounds of the grid or you reach a water cell, you have to go back. Sorry, you can't go there. Else, what you have to do, you have to mark that cell as visited, which means here we have just modified that cell, which was land as water, so that we, we can say, okay, it is visited. Every land cell which is transformed to water, it's a visited. It is not visited so that we cannot, we will not visit that cell again as we have the condition that I am only visiting my cell if it is a land. Cool. And then the four possible options go right, go left, go up, go down. Exactly same what we did. We just went in I minus one, which means down, which we went to I plus one, which is up. We went to J minus one, which is left. We went to J plus one, which is right. So that I'm just exhausting all possible directions. It will just go on and call the same function. It will just firstly check, okay, if that cell is actually a valid cell or not. And then if it is yes, then it just firstly mark that it has visited. And then again, go and do a DFS traversal. That is how in the same, like we have seen the same breadth for search traversal for in the grid. Exactly, it works exactly like this. It's just that in a, a EFS traversal, it's much shorter code. And the time complexity is nothing but O of M into N because you are just traversing every cell of the grid exactly once. Maybe in the worst case, every cell is a land. So you have to traverse every cell of the grid. That's the reason in worst case, the time is O of M into N. Space is also O of M into N because of the recursive stack of our recursion, right? Because in internally recursion is nothing but he just internally builds that stack inside. So as to go to like the whole depth. Thus, I can say, okay, my space is O of M into N. And if you have used your visited, then again, a O of M into N would have been added, but the complexity in total would have remained O of M into N, but still an extra O of M into N would have been used. That's pretty much it. All the codes of C++ and Java are down below and also Python. So I hope that you guys got it that okay, I just started from a node. I just did a traversal. Traversal means going on to every of those node and at every of the node, I just firstly check if that cell is valid or not. If that cell is valid, then I have to go visit that cell and just try to go all the cells around it. And for sure, as it goes to the next cell, which means if I'm standing here and I go to the right cell, then it will for sure try to go to every of those cell, which means it will try to come back here. But we have checked that if it is zero, because earlier it was land, but as it was traversed, it will become a zero. But now for this cell, it is zero. So it will not traverse it because it was actually visited. So it is acting as both visited as well as water. Thus, I just don't have to write conditions too. Else, if I have used a visited ones, so I would have write uh, grid zero, which means it should not be a water or if the visited is one, which means it has already been visited. I hope that you guys got it. And I have purposely taught you the uh, depth for search traversal because we have seen same kind of problem in the PFS traversal a lot. I hope that you guys liked it. Goodbye, take care.